Kid Rock is well known as someone who pushes limits and represents down home roots. And despite a reported net worth of over $80 million, this music superstar chooses to live in a double wide trailer instead of a mansion these days. He's lived in some of the most epic and grand estates from Nashville to his hometown of Detroit. But in 2017, Rock sold his estate in Malibu and traded it in for a simpler lifestyle in his current trailer home located on his stunning piece of land in Tennessee. He'd previously explained that this suits him much better, saying in an interview, I live in a double wide trailer, it's not like I require a lot. You know, I've learned to downsize through the years and it really made me more happy. While Kid Rock has definitely lived in the lap of luxury over the years, considering he's owned mansions across the US, he's traded in those properties in recent years for a more low maintenance type of living, despite his massive net worth. In 2017, the star sold his Malibu estate and instead chose to live his years out in a double wide trailer located in Tennessee. In 2015, reports claim that Kid purchased 102 acres in the area of White's Creek, just outside of Nashville for $800,000. While it was nearby to a multi-million dollar home he built on 68 acres, he ended up using this sprawling land as the location for his mobile home. The rock star had called Nashville his part-time home since 2005 and formerly split his time between there, his native Detroit, Alabama, and LA. A few years ago, when Kid Rock finished trading Tennessee Mountaintop on his own Tennessee Mountaintop, he hosted one of his many parties at his place just outside of Nashville. He likes to entertain here and reportedly would set up a buffet for his guests behind his camouflage double wide trailer, where you can also check out some views that stretch 15 miles to the Nashville skyline. Kid Rock claims he stumbled on this Tennessee property by accident. His car could only make it a part of the way of this narrow, winding road he was driving up on. So he parked and walked to the top instead, and when he saw this view, Kid Rock was sold. When explaining why he chose a trailer as his residence, he said it was more impulsive than anything else. Kid Rock planned to build a cabin on his property over in Alabama, but wanted it sooner than it would be ready, so he decided to check out a manufactured home retailer that he drove by. In an interview, the singer told the story, I didn't remember when the last time I looked at a trailer was. I kind of scared this lady and her husband, and I said, what's your most expensive trailer? I was a little impatient that day. She said, sir, that's $89,000. I was sitting there like, can I look at it? And she looked at her husband and I was like, are you guys actually thinking about it? You might not let me see it. When they showed Kid Rock the trailer and when he discovered the manufacturer could customize it with any design changes, including reinforcing a wall or leaving the finish blank so he could add a vinyl wrap and mossy oak, he was sold. Kid Rock ordered two trailers right then and there, one for his Tennessee property and another for his plot of land in Alabama. The star was ready to commit to a simpler kind of life, and while explaining why he loves his trailer, he said, If that trailer burns down or blows off the mountain, order another one. It'll be here in two weeks. It's very easy to clean, simplicity at its finest. Sure, you don't have some of the finer luxury things like big, thick shag carpet, but that stuff's never really meant a lot to me. Kid Rock's custom trailer was even featured in his music video for his song Podunk, released in June 2017. In this video, you can't miss his moss-covered residence. However, the singer has said he won't give up certain perks he's used to, like his Rolls Royce, which you can see on the driveway. His trailer also features a pond out back that's ideal for fishing and wooden stairs to a deck with room to entertain guests or host barbecues and parties. His simple, cozy residence also shows off stunning views of Nashville from all sides. Another perk Kid Rock won't give up despite living in a double wide is the ease and convenience of his private jet. Just past his spot of land and mobile home, you'll find an airstrip just big enough for his private plane. About his airstrip, he told Rolling Stone, no security, just drive a pickup truck onto the tarmac, leave your keys in the car, get on the plane. Since we looked at Kid Rock's trailer abode, let's check out one of his former homes which he lived in from 2006 to 2017 prior to his double wide. He bought this place for $11.6 million. Located in Malibu, California in the residential Point Doom community, which is highly favored by celebrities alike, his former spread sat on 1.5 acres. It had the ultimate privacy thanks to the lush greenery that surrounded the home as well as secure gates. Kid's former residence was entered through carved wooden doors and inside offered 8,300 square feet of space along with five bedrooms and multiple baths throughout. The home had an airy vibe along with many fresh white walls and floor to ceiling windows. 
There was also an ideal indoor outdoor vibe to take advantage of the stunning settings and serene interiors also had figures inspired by the spiritual culture of Bali. All of the white was complemented by dark hand carved wooden columns, beams and doors give an elegant earthiness to the place. There was an open plan main living room with full glass wall on one side and elsewhere a cozier den brightened by high gloss beadboard walls and French doors that lead to the outside. His former crib also had a large gourmet kitchen with designer appliances and high wooden ceilings that seamlessly blended into the attached dining room with fireplace and opened out onto an outdoor lanai area. Elsewhere, Kid Rock's former abode boasted a large home movie theater, fitness studio, and a sauna. In the master suite, it was decorated with the same Bali-inspired atmosphere, and the bed was draped with a flowing canopy. There were also two walk-in closets, a private sitting area, and terrace here. The large master bath offered white walls, dark wood accents, and walls of windows including a spa-like tub set within amazing views of the property. In addition to the upscale main residence, the property also came complete with a guest house with outdoor shower and also on the grounds. The focal point was a massive and beautiful infinity pool. Kid Rock listed and delisted his Malibu homes many times since 2013 until he sold it at a loss for $9.5 million. Kid Rock has also spent a lot of his time living in Detroit over the years considering it's where he's originally from. His former mansion there, a grand and traditional estate, popped up on the market in 2021 for $2.1 million. Located in a very exclusive subdivision in Detroit, his home was one of only a few in the area that also sat right on the waterfront of the Detroit River. In fact, the mayor of Detroit was one of the neighbors here also on the water. Listing materials explain that Kid Rock's former crib offered a full and breathtaking view of the river. Ever. Not to mention there was a handy boathouse with outdoor shower, jet ski lifts, and an upper deck ideal for entertaining guests. The boathouse and shower were part of an extensive renovation in the years while the rock star lived here that also included an attached two-car heated garage and two outdoor TVs complete with a state-of-the-art entertainment system. The exterior of the stately home boasted white plank siding contrasted by black shutters, rails, and roofing. Once you've passed the security gates and the massive columns flanking the front door, the interior entry offered a sweeping staircase, beam ceilings, and a sparkly chandelier. Throughout the mansion, there were multiple balconies that overlooked the grounds and a handful of living rooms, many with fireplaces. The gourmet kitchen was fitted with high-end appliances including a large stainless steel range while the formal dining room was painted in a bold red theme. Other features in Kid Rock's former mansion included a full bar, games room, custom master bath, and lower level family room. Outside on the grounds, there was nearly an acre of land which were perfectly manicured and had sitting areas, patios, and benches for hosting guests. Now that we've checked out two of Kid Rock's former properties as well as his more humbly sized living quarters in Tennessee these days, that'll wrap up this house tour. Or in this case, trailer tour. But before we leave, answer me this. If you could own a fancy trailer on a nice piece of land, where would you put it? Let me know where you would find your perfect piece of land in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram to chat. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer, and if you'd like to check out another tour before you go, then stay tuned for this one where we check out the homes of his ex, the beautiful Pamela Anderson. Bye! Pamela Denise Anderson is a Canadian-American actress, model, TV personality, and author, best known for being a Playboy magazine model, as well as for her roles on shows like Baywatch and Home Improvement. She rose to fame after being chosen as February 1990's Playmate of the Month and went on to appear frequently on the magazine's cover. In fact, Pam holds the record of the most Playboy covers by any person. She became even more well-known in the 90s after appearing as Lisa in the ABC comedy series Home Improvement, later gaining international fame for her starring role as CJ Parker in Baywatch. This role also solidified Pam's status as a sex symbol. In the years to come, Pam would star in the action comedy series VIP as well as appear in many films and reality TV shows. Aside from her Hollywood career, she's also an activist for animal rights and endorsed 
Petta projects for many years. At the time of this recording, Pam has amassed herself a net worth between 12 to 20 million dollars. Hailing from Canada, Pam might just be the most famous Lady Smith resident of all time, which is the small, charming town on Vancouver Island where she lives. After years in Malibu and traveling the world, the star has finally returned home. Hey guys, it's Kara the Vampire Slayer, and I'm bringing you another house tour here on Famous Entertainment. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. We post a new video daily. Today, we're checking out the homes of Pam. Pamela Anderson, including the Malibu property she has on the market, and what we know about her estate in Lady Smith, BC. As always, don't forget to follow me on Instagram to chat, and now, let's get into this video. Miss Anderson has long lived in Malibu, even saying that for years she felt like the Malibu mascot. Years ago, Pam invited MTV Cribs into one of her former homes in Malibu, which was a charming cottage style residence. While it may have looked modest, this home still boasted six beds, five baths, and features like an outdoor bath. I collect a lot of pottery from the 30s and 40s. This is a French chandelier. I have some Italian chandeliers. I collect a lot of old antique blankets and little frilly stuff. The shabby chic style home was in the garden gated Malibu colony, but Pam moved on from year around 2007, listing the place at $6.5 million and then deciding to rent it out. After this, Pam and her sons decided to lease a large chateau style mansion in the hills of Malibu on Morning View Drive. Located north of Point Doom and overlooking the Pacific Ocean, this house looked like a French fantasy and spans 4,584 square feet with four beds and four baths. The mansion was a gated estate with access to the beach sitting on about three acres with ocean views and rolling lawns. Modeled after the finest homes in Europe, Pamela's former property also boasted a swimming pool flanked with perfect landscaping. Inside there were beam ceilings and a large formal entryway with double staircase and rustic chandeliers. The design here was a mix of classic architecture and modern amenities, and other highlights included a great room with soaring ceilings, a gourmet kitchen, and seven fireplaces throughout. The floors were wood, stone, and antique terracotta, and there was also a beautiful indoor-outdoor room and spacious master suite with private balcony. In recent news, Pamela is selling her longtime Malibu beach house and her sweet retreat is on the market for $14.9 million. The star bought the property for $1.8 million back in 2000, but it gave the modern home a complete remodel in 2013 with the help of architect Philip Vertoch and interior designer Joss Crisanthu. Not to mention, Pam also added her own elements and signature touches to the home, like a bathtub in her bedroom. The actress has helped to design a number of homes she's owned through the years and she's actually done the whole bathroom and the bedroom thing in nearly all of them. After years of living at the coastal compound or renting it out when she's not there, Pam is moving back to her roots after marrying her bodyguard Dan Hayhurst on Christmas Eve of 2020. The pair is focused on renovating her longtime home in BC. Pam's Malibu home is located in the chic Malibu colony community where she's lived before, actually across the road from the beach instead of right on the water, but it comes with a key to access one of the most exclusive beaches around. Pam's property is hidden from the street and sits behind gates inside, spanning 5,500 square feet, and this is divided between the main house and the guest house. There are four beds and 4.5 baths throughout, as well as teak wood imported from ethical areas. The main house and guest house are separated by an elegant outdoor entertainment area with pool and dining space, and beneath the guest house, there's a second outdoor area with fire pit, hot tub, and cozy vibes. The overall design of Pam's property is airy and classic Malibu with floor to ceiling glass sliders and hardwood floors throughout. In 2013, Pam briefly put her Malibu oasis on the market for $7.75 million, but then decided to offer it as a rental instead for 40 k per month. When it was up for lease, her home came furnished with features like a white piano, crystal chandeliers, white sofas, and easy chairs. Her home was centered by a spacious great room with open floor plan made up of the kitchen, living, and dining rooms, and complete with a wall of glass doors opening to the terrace. 
The kitchen features an Eden Island and high-end appliances including a glass-fronted refrigerator and built-in espresso machine. Pam's master suite takes up most of the second floor with an open-plan bedroom and features like a private balcony, corner fireplace, and hidden closets with built-in lighting. Half of the bathroom, a Picasso-style tub and vanity, is out in the open of the bedroom. The rest of the ensuite has dual sinks and even a sauna. Pam has said about her bedroom here. My bedroom is my favorite room in the house. I love it and it's the most sensual and clean space with a rain shower on a teak floor and sauna attached plus a bathtub in my bedroom. The terrace in the master suite also provides access to a rooftop deck with another outdoor fireplace and amazing views. Sustainable elements in Pam's Malibu house include solar panels and an irrigated vegetable garden that was also sustainably built. Holding onto the home turned out to be beneficial for Pam since she'll make a pretty profit if the property sells for even close to the $14 million plus asking price. On moving back home to Canada, Pam also explained, I feel more settled on my sustainable ranch on Vancouver Island with space to rescue more animals. It's still beachfront, one foot away from the water and I'm lost. Now Pam has returned to her Vancouver Island farm, a six acre compound she bought from her grandmother decades ago and has plans to renovate the waterfront property. Anderson Anderson and her husband have been staying in Ladysmith since 2019, often visiting even before the pandemic to fix the property up as it fell into disrepair when her grandmother passed away. Pam has always had a special place in her heart for Ladysmith, the charming and warm small town where her property is located. It was originally named Oyster Harbor and is a town on the east coast of Vancouver Island with an economy based on forestry, tourism and agriculture. Pam's property was originally owned by her paternal grandmother who used to run a general store out of one of the buildings, and it's remained in the family since. After spending a few years in the south of France, Pam decided she wanted to move back home. The place had been neglected for about 20 years and definitely was in need of some TLC. The Ladysmith estate has different cabins on the property by the sounds of it, and there were little bedrooms that Pam showed off in an interview. Her father's family used to sleep there once upon a time, and one of the smaller white bedrooms is where Pam has been sleeping to these days. Rumors that Pam was planning to develop or build condos in town were shut down, and the stars confirmed that for now, she's just just working on restoring her home. She said, I just want a simple dock like it used to be. I'm sure I'll get a boat one day. It's been a lifelong art project. My kids have some ideas for their cabins, so it's a family adventure. My mom and dad were married here. My father grew up on the property and my parents lived with me and my brother in cabin six. So I'm happy to have not been seduced into building that big condo project. The Canadian star has posted peeks into her life on Vancouver Island thanks to Instagram, and we can see she enjoys spending time in the great outdoors with her pets. Pam has also said about her plans for her Ladysmith property, I've spent the last year here renovating, landscaping, creating gardens so that we can live sustainably. A greenhouse, potter's wheel, canning pickles and beets. I'm creating my life here now again where it all started. Residents of Vancouver Island may have even spotted Pam already since she's been keeping busy. Anderson is on billboards along the Patricia Bay Highway here since she's teamed up with a local animal rescue sanctuary to launch the billboards promoting veganism. So while we don't have many photos of Pam's current Ladysmith property, I'm sure we'll be able to see more of the place when she's done giving it a facelift and restoring her dream home. After looking at a few of Pamela Anderson's homes, what did you guys think? I think that Malibu place she's selling is a perfect mix of modest and upscale living. While it isn't as sprawling as some mansions, it's definitely upscale and in one of the nicest areas you could ask for. I also love how Pam includes natural vibes in her interior design. Be sure to let me know what you liked or didn't like about her homes in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and tell me whose house tours you want to see featured next on this channel. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!